Oh hey guys, I was having a crisis of consciousness today, as I do, and I decided I should get into combat sports. So for the last uh, 10 minutes, I've been, I've been practicing. Turns out, this is a baseball glove. I'll just go back to doing what I do best. Do you fucking hate Jigglypuff? Me too. Well boy do I have a game for you. Super Smash Bros. is one of Nintendo's biggest series of all time. What originally started as a simple fighting game starring some of Nintendo's most iconic characters quickly turned into one of the biggest crossovers of all time. I mean, we got Sonic, Banjo-Kazooie, Solid Snake, Sora, Joker, and... and Jigglypuff. F*** Jigglypuff. There has been a Smash Bros. game for every Nintendo console since it first came out. Like it started on the Nintendo 64, then GameCube, Wii, Wii U, Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo Switch, and I assume it'll keep going for a very long time unless Nintendo goes down the hole or something. And each Smash Bros. game gets better as the newest one releases. More polished, more characters, new modes, new ways to f***ing kill Jigglypuff. I hate Jigglypuff. So with all this, that's why today we'll be playing the worst one. In 1998, the game director Masahiro Sakurai was working on a four-player fighting game titled Dragon King THE Fighting Game. That's right, Dragon King wasn't just a fighting game, it was THE fighting game. Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter would look up in horror at it. It never released. Sakurai understood that at the time, fighting games didn't sell super well, which gave him the idea to add Nintendo characters into the game and pitch it to Nintendo. However, knowing that he wouldn't be able to get permission if he just asked, he got the bright idea to use Nintendo characters without Nintendo's permission and show the tech demo to the higher-ups as a surprise. Really playing with his life there, and the modern day Nintendo would shoot you in the back of the head in the middle of the street. Sakurai put together a short tech demo featuring the characters Mario, Donkey Kong, Samus, and Fox, and made sure to make the demo as polished and put together as possible so Nintendo didn't f***ing kill him the second he walked in with the demo. But against all odds, Nintendo actually liked the demo and greenlit the project, and with that created Super Smash Bros created by HAL Laboratories. You may ask, who the hell are HAL Laboratories? Well, HAL Laboratories made the old Kirby games, but most importantly, uh, uh, Ghostbusters 2 for the Game Boy. Real hidden gem. I've never heard of it until now. But with all this came Super Smash Bros for the Nintendo 64 released in April of 1999. This game opens up with a hand. Huh? And... Oh my god, they, they killed Yoshi. Huh? And, oh, they're toys. Boring. This game opens up with a short cutscene introducing you to the characters and some of their attributes. Like we got Mario and his iconic uh, punching, he does that a lot in the games. And then we got Donkey Kong with him acting like a jackass. Classic Donkey Kong. Okay. And then we got Link who is doing way too much. Simmer down. Oh, and don't forget Yoshi who who has a damn tongue, hell yeah! Anyways, the intro has some shots of everyone beating the piss out of each other. Uh, why? Well, considering that the start of the cutscene we see all the characters as just toys, that makes me believe that we take control of some psychopath kid who, who really hates Jigglypuff. Don't point any fingers at me. And then at the end of the cutscene, we have this raw ass shot of Mario and Kirby about to beat the hell out of each other in this field in the middle of nowhere, and it has thunder in the background. Be careful, you guys could get hurt. Honestly, this is one of the hardest images to ever be created, along with this uh, image of Mega Man shaking hands with Sonic. I'm putting together an art wall here. And then after all this, we finally get a title reveal. I incest. What? Now that the game has finally started, we get to, well, actually play the game. We have a simple menu with some options, which include one player mode, versus mode, options, and data. Well, considering that I have no friends, meaning versus mode is no use for me, and options and data remind me of school, looks like our only option here is single player. That always comes to this whenever I play a game. Now, the options in this are the one player game where you get to go through a slew of battles until you reach the boss, a training mode where you get to test out characters, and then a practice mode for the bonus games you, you play in the single player campaign. In the single player, you go through a bunch of battles with a few bonus games thrown in to mix things up. This is what most people do in the game. You know, besides battle against your friends, you don't have a shelf that looks like this without making some sacrifices. You get to choose between some characters to fight as, which include many of Nintendo's most iconic characters at the time. Mario, Donkey Kong, Link, Samus, Kirby, Fox, Pikachu, and the four mystery characters you unlock by completing certain things in the game, which I'll get to later. I actually think that for the time, this is the perfect list of Nintendo characters to include in a Nintendo fighting game. It might not have a bunch of random Nintendo plus other characters going into some very deep cuts, but it has characters you need for a Nintendo fighting game. 
Like, you need Mario, you need Link, you need Pikachu. You don't really need Diddy Kong. Even for as much as I love Diddy Kong, he's not a Nintendo icon. I'm sorry. In this game, each character's stats are based upon who they are as a character? M makes sense. Like, Donkey Kong is a heavyweight character who punches a lot in his moveset because he's a gigantic gorilla. Like, what else would a giant gorilla do? Not that, not that! And you also got Link, who's a lightweight character who uses weapons from his games, like a sword and, and, and bombs, because he's a twink. This all makes sense, although I will say, for some characters, I feel like they could have gotten a little bit more creative with how they designed them. Like Mario, he has some moves taken from his games, as you'd expect, like his jump, where he gets some coins, and his fireball, but I think they could have done a lot more with this. Like, they could have used more power-ups from his games, like using a Tanuki Tail or a Cape for Mario World, that could have been really cool, instead of just, just punching. He punches in, like, one game. And even Donkey Kong, for how awesome he is, he could have been a lot cooler. Like, they could have made him use a banana or something. I, I don't know, he's a monkey, it, it makes sense to me. I understand that for some characters, they might not have had some of the things they are known for having now, but again, I still feel like they could have done a lot more things with some characters that they just didn't do. For me personally, I never loved playing as the heavyweight characters in this game. When I first played, I tried playing as Donkey Kong because you guys know me. But I just never liked how the heavyweight characters felt. They always felt a little slow and like you don't have much control over them, so I always chose the lighter characters here. I started with Mario, then Yoshi, but I found the character I'm best with is Link, which is who I mostly play as. When I play this game, I don't play this game often. As I said a while ago, the single player in this game has you fight through many fights, as well as some bonus games to change up the gameplay. You have three lives and you have to get through all these without using them up. That's how games work. Now this may sound easy enough. One problem though, I can't play this game. And the controls in this game feel awkward, stiff, and just not good. And you never really have enough precision to play well. Like, I think I'm at least decent with the modern Smash Bros. games, but with this one, I honestly feel like it relies on just luck with how the AI is gonna play. I say AI because I have no experience with playing with an actual friend, because... Do I need to spell it out for you again? I feel like even if I play this game for an hour straight, I can't fully grasp how this game controls. And it's not like this thing helps me either. Now, I don't hate this controller, I think it's oddly phallic-shaped, which makes it kind of uncomfortable to play with. What am I saying? I do hate this controller, I feel like I'm doing something wrong anytime I use this thing. In multiple ways, put a sock on that thing. In playing this game with... this thing... you. The weirdest thing to me is that they chose to use your stick to control the character, which has no cover on it, meaning you have to play the whole thing with a plastic... thing. And with a fighting game where you're constantly moving the stick back and forth, your hands start to sweat and then your fingers start slipping around everywhere and you think, Why am I even playing this? That's a good question. With the N64 controller, it's made to be played in two different ways, where you can play with the D-pad, but also with the thumbstick. Why didn't they let you use the D-pad? You guys piss me off. And I know most of these problems could be fixed with emulation, but I'm a Nintendo fan, the word emulation uh, fears me. But going past the controls, let's just look at the single player. The single player is pretty good, but my main problem with it is that every single playthrough of it is the exact same, which gets pretty annoying. Like, the first fight in each playthrough with any character will always be Link, you'll always fight Fox, you'll always fight the Mario Bros, etc. The only real changes that are made are if you're playing as a character you're fighting against, all they do is change the fighter's color. It, cool. I know some people love going through this game as each character, but I see no reason to do this, as again, it's literally the same each time. But Mario is yellow in this fight, so now I gotta do it. To spice up the gameplay in the single player, you also get to do some bonus games. I hate these. First, you have Break the Targets, where you need to break through targets on a stage. This would be cool, but again, the controls here are just clunky, and it makes it extremely hard to get to certain points. And then next, you have Board the Platforms, which is roughly the same, but you just need to get to the top of the platforms instead of breaking them. This one gets annoying, because if you make one mistake and hit the ground, you get flung up into the air and you have to redo a bunch of it, and it, it, I just, I never, I've never gotten far into this one. I might suck, but, but tell me this doesn't look janky. And then lastly, you have Race to the Finish, which I actually kind of like this one. It's not perfect, it can be pretty hard to play, again this game's controls are, are janky, but it's pretty fun. To make this difficult, they have these fighters which will beat you up if you get close to them. These get kind of annoying, but it's nowhere near as annoying as the other bonus games. So good job Super Smash Bros, only two of your three bonus games suck, and the last one that doesn't suck is just fine. 
Also in this game's single player, you have a few bosses to fight as you go through. Firstly, you have a giant Donkey Kong, which is stupidly easy since he hardly tries to hurt you, and his hitbox is really big because he's a giant. And you also have two other teammates to help you defeat him, so this is way too easy. Great. Next, you have Metal Mario, who's just Mario with a shiny texture, who just hits a little harder, but also doesn't really move much. Guys, this is a character we put a lot of effort into. Put him in Mario Kart. And then last, you have a big fight against a big hand. It's kind of poetic, honestly. Like, since you're supposed to be a kid playing with your toys in this game and making them beat the piss out of each other, it's like you finally decide that enough is enough, and you take down the puppet master that controls you, finally getting your freedom. Or maybe I'm looking too far into it, and it's just supposed to be silly. Who knows? The single player in this game takes like 30 minutes to go through. It isn't hard, and it's very basic, but it's very fun to go through every so often. Like, even though I'd rather play Classic Mode than Smash Ultimate or the Subspace Emissary from Brawl any day, this is still fun to occasionally go back on and see where it all started, and thank god for technological advancement. This game also introduces some of the most iconic and mainstaying stages for the series, and I would actually say that these are some of the best in the series. It makes sense considering that they've returned in every Smash game with almost no changes. While there aren't many, actually only including 9, you don't really need a million stages for them to be quality. Take notes, Ultimate, I have not played like 75% of these. First, we have Peach's Castle, based after uh, Peach's Castle from Mario. This stage takes place in the skies above Peach's Castle, which you can see in the Wing Cat mission from Mario 64. This stage is very good, the floors move around, which adds some strategy. It, great. And most importantly, the stage just looks nice. Like, imagine putting a nuclear reactor here. The US government, get on it. Then you have Mushroom Kingdom, based after a, a Mario level. This one looks cool. I wouldn't want to live here. You also have Yoshi's Island, Congo Jungle, Hyrule Castle, Sector Z, which are all quality but a little basic outside of the art style. My favorite stage is Saffron City, which is a pretty basic stage, but you gotta watch out for the corner sometimes because Pokemon pop out of the corner and they do a shit ton of damage, so watch out. The only stage I really dislike in this game is Planet Zebes. It just gets kind of annoying. The lava rises up every so often, so you need to get to the top, but your enemy also goes there, and if he hits you, then you usually fall into lava, and it does a bunch of damage, and it gets really annoying. You may remember earlier when I said there were four unlockable characters in this game. I wasn't lying. Surprising, I know, so let's talk about them. Firstly, you can unlock Jigglypuff by just simply playing the single-player game here. Pretty easy. One problem. I HATE JIGGLYPUFF! I would stomp on it, but it turns out Jigglypuff isn't real, so... And then you can also unlock Luigi by doing the Break the Targets bonus game with all 8 characters. This is akin to a human torture and all you get is Luigi. Was it worth it? Yes. And then next you unlock Ness by completing the single player without losing any lives. Ness is actually a really cool addition to this game, being a pretty obscure character only in a very niche game. Ness's legacy is mostly known because of Super Smash Bros, which is kinda sad because the Earthbound or Mother games are actually great and some of the best games I've ever played, so it's cool to have him here. Did the series do any better with Ness as a playable character? You guys suck. That sentiment also holds true for the next unlockable character in this game, Captain Falcon from the F-Zero series. You unlock Captain Falcon by beating the single player campaign in under 20 minutes, which is easy enough, but Captain Falcon is such a cool character. Captain Falcon at this point is pretty much just a Smash original character, since in his game F-Zero, he was just a racer, no personality, I don't even think he had a full design. So Smash Bros basically created him and gave him his own character traits, like the Falcon Punch, in the Falcon Punch, oh and also the Falcon Punch. Did Captain Falcon's inclusion as a fighter in Smash Bros help his series in the long run? Well, that was the first Super Smash Bros. game. It's not perfect, but it's a game that goes down in history as truly iconic or whatever. It has its problems and it wouldn't age the best in many aspects, but without this game we wouldn't have gotten one of the best crossovers ever. And one of the most accessible fighting games ever too. Although I do think that this game is the sole reason why I've become violent, so I've made an oath to myself. I will not beat the piss out of Jigglypuff. Damn it!